that in this room today we've got many relatives and friends of those who are either currently in liberty or Ashraf or, or have been or have, have died uh, as a result of the 52 that were killed on in 1st of September, as an example. It's near and dear to all of our hearts. It's near and dear to my heart in particular because it is a commitment that America made. You know, and I'd like to consider myself an honorable man like these three contemporaries of mine on this platform today. Honorable people that stand up for their word, that will fight for what's right. And when we make a commitment, we, we want to carry through with that commitment. While under U.S. control, the MEK were kept, were, were very uh, inv carefully investigated repeatedly by the United States military, and every member of the MEK was cleared of in any implication of threat activity. As we know, many of them are U.S. residents, and, and many of them hold uh, uh, degrees from U.S. colleges and universities. They have been promised time and time again by many governments, from the United States to Iraq to even Iran, that they would be safe under the Iraqi government. I specifically remember Ambassador Dan Freed from the State Department saying, don't worry, liberty is only a very brief stopover point as we relocate them to other countries, including the United States. We have failed to honor our commitments time and time again with the NEK, and we ought to be ashamed. Today, as mentioned, they are living under what I call brutal conditions, not having the protection that they should have there against these indirect attacks that they receive because they don't have enough T-walls. A few T-walls inside the camp, while hundreds of them are outside the camp, but the Iraqi soldiers, those brave souls that we saw, will not allow them to be brought in so that they, the, the people there can be protected. Most of the residents of Ashraf, of Ashraf and Liberty are well known by many here in the United States. They are very well known by a number of U.S. military officers who served with them during the Iraq war and who have stated time and time again, these individuals are not a, a security concern. Not one of them represents a threat to the national security of the United States. They have thousands of supporters here in the U.S. It could help in a lot of areas. They're very industrious, very smart, and well-educated people. And they could do that while still speaking out as a force of reform for Iran, for getting rid of the, the Ayatollah and the regime that's there and letting democracy flourish inside of that country.